Hello everybody. I just thought I'd pop on here today and um, share with you these little journal folio thingamajiggers I made. And um, I used these, I think they're like invitations or something that I um, uh, have for sale in my shop. And it's supposed to go this way. But as you can see, I just used it that way. And you open it up and then there it is. So it's like a nice uh, cardstock. So, oopsie, better keep that because that's what we're going to use for the demo. But let me show you. So, here's one where I used Edith Holden book pages and some of my uh, coffee dyed uh, crinkle ribbon. Um, and then to kind of, it doesn't really, I guess it kind of helps keep it closed, but just for dimension, uh, Tim Holtz uh, botanical cardstock flower which I'm totally drawing a blank but I'll I'll look them up and uh, put a link below they have them on Amazon so you can see the I always find it helpful to see the package of what things are if I'm not sure and great way to use um, you know the words and then these are stickers from the um, that sticker book from uh, by oh shoot I'll put that link I not mentally prepared I guess to share these and uh, more stickers from that. And then you lift it up and another Edith Holden illustration and that. And then um, some coffee dyed paper and old book pages. Um, and then there's the last page. So there's that one. And, and here's another one using some, whoops, more of my ribbon of course. And then I did this one I did stitching on. Oops, this is so awkward. I am, um, you'll have to excuse me. I'm so rusty. It, not that I've made a lot of videos, but I'll get my stride. I'll get my stride. So we've got Tim Holtz paper dolls, uh, half of, you know, cut in half of a paper doily, uh, pattern paper, uh, and then more Tim Holtz paper dolls. And this is a coffee, no, excuse me, this is a, a cupcake liner that I coffee dyed and stamped on. And more Tim Holtz there. And um, as you can see, just little bits of newer ephemera and another little booklet. And this one I did this way and it's a woodland theme. And these are, this is an illustration from a Reader's Digest nature book. And some scrap paper I had from when I made the gnome journals that looks like uh, wood. And another one of those butterflies from that sticker book. And a page from a nature, I think this is the Reader Digest one where I got this from. And right here, same thing. And then an owl sticker and a Tracy label and just an old book page, and a mushroom sticker, and a Tracy label, and a little stamping. And this one, I, I still need to write the blog post, but I made a mistake when I put it together, so you'll see, I mean, it, it's fine now, um, but I'm gonna definitely leave it in the blog post. And Oh, and I forgot to show, now this is a little tattered from when I embossed it, but I kinda like that. And this is uh, paper from Little Bindi. I forgot to show the backs on these. And the back, get this close back up. And then it's a vellum pocket. I haven't made any ephemera for the backs of these yet. And, and then a CD envelope and I just cut the flap off. And, then, and this is actually the end papers of this particular Edith Holden book. Some of them are brown and some of them are green. Okay, so now my vision for this one is I have uh, some journals I'm finishing up um, and I what I want to make instead of a little mini journal is like maybe an ephemera folder or a little with a little pocket and I could put some things in there so I actually so I have my uh, fabric tack and a pencil and a ruler and optional compass and then just like the papers and stuff I'm going to use and what I did 
is, oh, hold on, let me grab my stuff here. Um, I cut a quarter, a six and a quarter inch circle using my compass. You could also, you know, trace, oops, sorry guys, trace around this, um, you know, to get your pattern and just cut and cut within the side of the lines. And I'm going to tell you right now, as you see these, I, there isn't a single one of these where I cut them perfectly. And I feel like if you're consistent with that and the red, all the, it just kind of adds to the charm, in my opinion. I mean, I'm not a perfectionist, so if you're a perfectionist, it might bother you, but none of these are exactly the same. See, like this is a little, um, and I kind of like that. I think it just adds to the handmade um, feel of it and gives it some warmth. So, first thing you want to do is glue the back. I'm going to put some paper on the back. Of course, I already pre-cut it. It's about six inches, so this would be a good um, use of those paper pads of yours. But I decided, oh, I was going to stand up to do this. Um, and I did it a little smaller. It's actually about six and a quarter, six and a half, I can't remember which, around here. But I like having the little border. So let's see if I can do this. All right, you'll have to excuse me. I am, uh, this is, I haven't found the perfect setup yet for how I want my phone for recording these little how-to tutorials, tips and tricks, whatever you want to call them. I'm shy to call it a tutorial because, honestly, I've, I've been paper crafting about two years, but I haven't really done that much. Um, I come from making, uh, like, primitive dolls, like Santas and snowmans and Raggedy Ann's and doing, and then, of course, vintage stuff and painting furniture, and, and I got a little burned out on that. Um, and I wanted something new, and YouTube suggested all these wonderful junk journalers like Gil, Augustinelli, and Nick the Booksmith, and I just fell in love. So even though I've been doing it for a while, oh, that's not centered, but we're just going to go with it because it is down. Um, so I, you know, I, I'm still kind of new to this whole paper crafting thing. Um, okay, so I like to just kind of make sure... Um, they're kind of sort of level. Did I tell you, mentioned that my dolls were primitive. I am uh, not very good at this, getting things. Let's see, how wide's my ribbon? I'm kind of used to fabric crafts. They're a little bit more forgiving. Um, plus, I did it for so long. Okay, and I did that at the three. So I'm going to go three. Up and I forgot. See, this is why I pre cut everything, sort of, because um, <laughs> you didn't need to watch me be awkward, did you? That's what I should call this video me being awkward for. Okay, oh, I brought there it is, and then an exacto knife. Actually, mine's a Martha Stewart, so does that make it a Martha Stewart knife? Craft knife. And just kind of make a slit. Oh boy, I hope I can do this with this phone here. Okay, so there's that. And slit that one. And I probably made it a little bigger than it needs to be, but that's okay. Um, move that out of the way. And did I go all the way through? I did, I did, I did. Oh, not quite. Oh, good enough. And I pre-cut the ribbon, and it's about... Uh, 42 inches long. Now, this ribbon, unlike my seam binding, first of all, I gotta make sure it's not upside down. Tip one, um, it's not two sided. So, hopefully, this will not end up being. I uh, haven't used this ribbon for this, so hopefully, it comes out okay. Fingers crossed. So, hope you all are touch your fingers crossed for me and hanging in there. Okay, I hope you're not yelling at me. No, no, don't do it that way. Oh, no. It won't work, Emily. And I got this ribbon at um, Hobby Lobby. It is American Crafts. There we go. Three yards. Premium ribbon. Alrighty. So we just kind of want it to look a little level. 
And we want, oh boy, I want the ribbon to be about. Sorry, I know you guys can't see what I'm doing. I'm trying, I'm holding it up and uh, trying to see that it's like equal lengths and centered. And I'm sorry I can't do that on camera. I don't, I just don't have the smarts to figure that out. I'm still working on it. Sorry. All right. So I'm sliding it back and forth and I'm just holding the ribbon up. This is stimulating, I'm sure. I'm so sorry. And, okay, that's good enough. And I'm gonna take my glue. And now this is really important to do it this way, probably since this is just gonna be have a pocket, this isn't a big deal. But I did it this way in the ones with the journals, like with the ribbon down first, through the back. And then even though it didn't show that much, um, let me see if I can show you here. I, I did put cardstock or paper down and you hardly can even see it. But that way, when you're journaling here, you don't have the bump from the ribbon. And also from pulling on it, it gives it some extra strength. That's my theory. Okay, so for the back, excuse me while I move all my pre-cut stuff here. Um, I have cut out this sweet polka dotted rib uh, ribbon paper and I'm just gonna stick some more glue on there and get it well covered I just switched my um, actually it's the three in one but you know the beacon glue to this uh, bottle I had seen other I saw other people on YouTube this sweet sugar bell had been using these bottles and it is so much easier. Um, I'm not so far. Now I've only done it for a couple projects here. I don't have my glue, the, the glue volcano. Plus it's much easier to um, squeeze. It's a much softer bottle. So that was a really good tip. Okay, so we've got that down. Then I pre-cut a scrap from the journals that I'm working on. Um, can you see that? There we go. I'm sorry, guys. And I'm just going to go ahead and glue that in place. Um, when I did this before, of course, I would have sewn. Uh, I just used my machine and... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm hot camera. I'm trying to see what I'm doing. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, I sewed... Paper. I think I used, like... I'll have it in the blog post. But I used, um, like, four pieces of paper cut to size and I just used my machine to sew them and then I uh, just glued it on top the last page on top of this cardstock so and you would want to do your stamping before you glue it in so that's what I did here see it's stitched on the machine on a long stitch my longest stitch and then I just glued the last page in there so that was how I did that all right but we're doing something a little different here because why not? And now, and I also inked on all those. But since these are kind of a Dick and Jane theme, I decided not to. There's Oh, I heard that. There's someone going, yay, no inking. And other people going, oh, I love inking. It's so relaxing to watch someone ink. <sighs> Probably not. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm going to glue... Sally down. I love um, her dress in this because it's polka dots and I love polka dots. And these images from um, that I'm gluing on the inside. Let's see. This one. These were all from well these are from actually different uh, Dick and Jane books. This is one a friend of mine gave me several of them that uh, were reproductions reprints probably from the 90s. Um, and someone had already, like, used a knife and cut them apart. Like, the, so it was just, like, this bundle rubber band together with the front and, or the covers, no spines, and just all the pages loose. Well, they were perfect for this journal I was working on. But this one, I needed these, um, for ho the horizontal, uh, images, the, this book wasn't quite wide enough. And it's not the end of the world, but, uh-oh. Now, see, look what I did here. It's not, it's cutting out, it's a little, sticking out a little bit here. So, question, 
Should I trim it or should I leave it? I guess I'm trimming it. Um, not a per perfectionist, as you can see. But, as I said, I think it gives it some charm. And so this one's actually from a, an old one, Dick and Jane book. They're a little bigger. Um, now, where's the other? And here's another one from that reproduction one. Isn't that great image? See, look at that face in the middle. So, but this one was wide enough. Now, oh, I do have a tip too, which some of, for some of you, that's going to be so obvious when you go to cut these images out. Um, you know, if you're using pattern paper, it can be pretty easy. Um, but when I was making my ones of, you know, the ones I showed you, especially on the woodland one, now I might have been a little dit ditzy that day. Aren't we all a little ditzy? But I kept cutting, like I would want, get this down. I would want the image, like I would want this one to be like this. And, you know, to fit here on the bottom. And then I kept cutting it wrong. So it was the other way and I couldn't put it here. And I had this revelation. <sighs> so obvious, but it always is. When I go to cut out this, when I went to go cut out this image and I used my circle that I just folded in half, which I didn't say, and I traced around around it on, you know, the book page, um, I looked at the flap and then I would lay it down on the page. Oh, I don't have a page here. Oh, well, here, this is going to be the pocket for the back. But so like I wanted it like this to say, and I was, okay, so I want this to fit on the bottom. So that means the curve has to be on the bottom. And I'd have to actually look at that. And then I could lay it out and trace it with my pencil and cut it out. So obvious. But for some reason, I couldn't get my brain to work that way that day. So anyway, just kind of look at your card and look at the flap before you cut out. You know, just, I don't know. Does that make sense? Is it, oh, I'm going to glue this. Is that as clear as as uh as mud i don't know but i hope that helps somebody um i haven't written the blog post yet because i worked on these like a week and a half ago and i thought well if i make a video first then i will have a reminder i won't just have to look at my pictures i'll have a reminder of how i i did it so i will definitely include once i get the blog post written um, a link below because I find pictures like if you watch a video the first time around it's great um, but sometimes you just want to look at like that one thing um, and you don't really want to watch the whole video oh see now I cut that one too big too so I'm gonna um, slowly and in slow motion here trim this and you can look at nothing here I guess I better think of a story to talk about or something um, I'm going to try really hard. Uh, this is June 2021. I don't know when you're watching this. But I'm going to really try hard the next two weeks. My parents don't have any doctor's appointments or anything that I need to take them to. So that will be nice. I get to just go visit them and not have to cart them around. My dad is at a point now with his dementia that um, I, I can't get him to leave the care facility. He... He, he doesn't want to leave, um, even for ice cream. I mean, clearly, there's something wrong with the man's priorities, but he loves ice cream. So, anyway, all right. Um, okay. Get this the right way. That goes that way. And that one. And I thought, oh, for this part, we will cut. So, this is... Now, this one... Ooh, Hold on one second, and I'll show you what book it's from. Talk amongst yourselves. Sorry, it's all the way at the other end. I meant to grab it before you. I wonder if you can even hear me. Oh, my gosh. i am probably go back when I'm watching this going, oh, Emily, you goofball. Okay. So this one, you know, which, as you can see, I got it at a garage sale for a dollar. Great images. I used that one, too. Okay. So this is from the same page, and I just thought that would be cute. To have a little bit of the story that goes with this image. So, glue that in place. So anyway, um, 
but that will be fun. I'll just go see him. Last time I went to see him, he thought I just graduated from college. Um, but hey, he knew who he wa who I was, and we had a really nice visit, and um, he was proud of me for graduating. So I thought that was nice. Um, and normally they let you, or they want you to um, visit them in the room because of COVID. Like we can't be in the common areas. But I couldn't get him to go in his room either. Um, and they just let me walk around with him. Uh, so that was, that was good. He's got a lot of energy, my dad. Um, he may not know what day it is or what's going on, but boy. And he likes to move the furniture around. He keeps all those young women that work at that care facility on their toes. <laughs> they have to go around and follow them. Put all the chairs and everything back. Okay. So, we got that. Now, so we got that one. And now, and then for this, I picked some bright, happy patterned paper. So this is, as you can see, once you get the cutting out, which I just did before starting this video, and it, you know, once you pick what you want, it takes longer, I think, to pick what you want for this project, like what images and papers. And I knew I wanted to do Dick and Jane to go as, this is going to be a thank you for the, whoever buys the one of the journals I made. Video coming shortly. Um, I just have to finish up. I made kits too as I was gathering and making stuff as I said I think it takes longer to pick out stuff for the project maybe it's because it's so much fun I just love going through all my stuff um and it's always painful because I can never fit everything I want in a journal or use all the ideas or make all the things I wanted to do I don't know why I treat every journal making as an all or nothing like I'll never make another Dick and Jane journal again well that's not true so I have to do everything right now. Oh, see, this one's a little, a little big, I think. Oh, nope. Okay. So we got that now to kind of help, help when the ribbon is tied, which hopefully will look cute. I'm just going to glue. Now, when I did um, these, I wanted you to see, I did, because this shows, I antiqued them with the Tim Holtz Distressing Ink as when I did all this. But... Um, and these, what I did, these are from, look at that, didn't even realize I did that. These are from this book, and because it's just regular paper, I spray, it did spray glue on a piece of cardstock, and then just kind of cut around them. And I didn't even, you know, it's just a basic little fussy cutting job. As I said, if, if you can be consistent with your inconsistency, then it then it's charming, see? So I'm just gonna glue. Now when I did the other ones with the to make sure I had the glue, because I don't wanna glue him down, we'll never get the book open again or the fo folio. So one thing you can do is open it up like this and then just kind of draw a light pencil line. Oops. Well, I'm gonna get a proper eraser to erase that. Not right now. So you can kind of know not to go past that line. I don't know if you can see it because I didn't really want it to show. So I'm going to oh, get this going here and see so much. Oh, sorry, guys. So much easier. Boy, this video is so awkward, guys. Ah! Well, thanks for hanging in there and watching it with me or why I do this and uh, being so patient. I hope... Um, you're enjoying this and getting something out of it. So then I'm going to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Kind of go up to that mark. Wipe off the excess glue. And then before it dries, so there we go. Might lower her down a little bit. Then, oh, see, so awkward. Okay, I'm going to look at this. All right, and I like this because it looks like they're, you know, I like this in the background. Take the ribbon. Actually, before I do the ribbon, I'm going to do one other thing because I didn't glue. I decided to use this for the pocket. I had, this is a scrap left over um, from the journal I was working on. 
uh, where I had used something on the other side or um, but it was already cut so and I also and I just thought it would be fun to use this paper instead of pattern paper there's just so many choices so many wonderful things to play with when you're making journals okay so we're gonna let that set so that's the back and then let's test the ribbon oh boy I'm committed now now clearly 40 I think 40 some inches is going to be too long but oops it wasn't quite dry yet maybe okay so we're just gonna test it this would be really a cute way to make birthday party invitations okay now it's gonna be a little bit sticky outy like a little poofy and that's okay because I haven't added the goodies yet so that just means there's room for the goodies I don't know why I'm fussing with the bow because I'm gonna have to open this to put the goodies in but all right uh, so I don't know I, I actually don't mind this ribbon but this is the drawback to using and I'm gonna say a yard would have been enough um, this is the drawback to using one-sided ribbon which is so cute look at that versus something like this ribbon that you can't make it look bad so but that actually looks pretty good so we're gonna open it back up and so we got this part and you open it up and look at Sally she's so cute oh and then I did bring some things to put in here so I have these left over from the cover so I'm going to pick one. Oh, I like that one for outdoors but oh no 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 M is for marbles okay we're gonna put M is for marbles in there and then this is from an old sewing pattern so that way when they're when they get their journal that's more fussy cut it thing cutted Wow good job um, they can I always like to include some things that I've cut out that I didn't use um, that they can use to embellish the pages that they're journaling on or in another journal so we got all these guys and then I had these that I never used and they're from books um, they make really cute journaling cards maybe we'll put those in the back we gotta put something in the back pocket so we got the fussy cutted cut it wow maybe I'm spending too much time with these little kids here I'm talking like one all right so let me turn that over and we can put these in there and then they can use those to embellish their journals so there we go all made up and ready to go ready to gift so I have actually not listed these yet but by the time this video goes up the these folio uh, card doohickey thingy jiggers I guess I better come up with the name before I do the listing, huh? I'll try to put that in the title. Um, but I'll have a link to my store. Oh, see, I could fuss with this bow forever. So tip, don't use a one-side ribbon no matter how cute it is, though that is not bad. Alrighty, so we are all done. I hope everyone's having a great day. I've been Emily from Vintage Polka Dot Shop, and I will include the links down below. Have a great one. Bye.